everybody, Scalcraft here again. Uh, today we have a couple things to talk about. Uh, first of all, we have the 199 challenge coming up on Friday. And uh, for those of you who are wondering how we're going to do this, um, anybody that has a YouTube channel or an account, you can upload your video onto your personal channel or account. And then copy and paste the link. And we're all going to post it on 357 Magdad's 199 Challenge video in the comments now, section. Again, if you're going to uh, put a video in, try and keep it under five minutes. Uh, the shorter the better. And uh, if you want to just put in a photograph, you can send it to me. And I will uh, put it together in a video montage. And then I will post that link on 357 Magdad's 199 entry under the comments. So at the end of this video, I will have my uh, email address if you want to just... Uh, just uh, send in a photo of your 199 uh, completed. Just uh, do that and send it to me and I will put it together and uh, have that sent in by tomorrow, Thursday, and it'll be up by Friday. Now, speaking of 199, I have my 199 right here completed in this box. I'll show you what it looked, get a little sneak peek. Okay, here it is, my entry for the 199 challenge. Let's see, uh, packed it all away for, oh jeez. Well, you know what? Maybe I should wait for Friday. You know, a couple of people have uh, contacted me and they said that, um, you know, they wanted to do a cast iron knife, but they couldn't find one, a, a cast iron utility knife. But, uh, you know, Stanley made these 1299s in cast iron. They're solid. They don't have the holes, which is probably a better design because, like I said, the blades are stored in the handle and the holes would allow moisture to get to the blade. So this was a, a better design, has a, a nice seal to it. But they wanted to see what it would look like, you know, when it was done. So let's work on this real quick and I'll show you what these look like done. Okay, here we are after the uh, wire brushing, and you can see uh, after the stripping, the paint remover, the wire brushing, what a beautiful casting, right? Um, inside and out, got all the rust out of there. I'm going to shellac the inside, as we always do, to keep that from rusting again. And, uh, and now we'll take it over to the, and get off this, uh, just around the raised edges, but we'll take it to the grind, the belt sander, and uh, make it real nice. Here we are right off the uh, belt, and you can see what a nice job it does. You know, the cast iron just looks so classic, doesn't it? And uh, this is where I went with the less is more with the last one. You could see with the dimpling in here, but this time we're going to add some color, and we'll do that in the... But it does look nice, uh, just the original casting the way it is. So we're going to shellac the inside now, let that dry, and then work on the color on the outside. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this knife looked like before we started. And we are calling this project done. Here's the Stanley 1299 cast iron edition. And uh, you can see we did a, use the Tamiya clear red. And it, it does a nice job in, in giving it a nice classic look. Almost like a, a maroonish. But it's a, a deep color. Nice deep red. And uh, the, obviously the cast iron always comes out nice. You know what a nice finish cast iron leaves. Now there's no coating on here yet. I might... Give it a little coating of uh, wax, oil, depends what I feel like, but it looks real nice now. And So that's the uh, $12.99. If you get a chance to pick one of these up, you know, you don't have to get the one with the holes, but these come out nice too. Okay, let's move on. Next, okay, next we have a, a nice little uh, item. We all like uh, vice grips, locking pliers, things like that. Well, this one's a little bit different. Let's see if you could pick out what's so different about it. Okay, here it is. Uh, I picked this up at Track to Supply. It was on clearance. Paid about $8.50 for this. And you say, well, it's a regular vice grip. Yeah, it's made in China and whatnot. But do you see anything different about it? And uh, <laughs> this is really cool. Okay, you ready? It's a giant. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is here. This is a 5-inch vice grip next to it. Here's a normal 7-inch, you know, like a 7-inch we don't usually use. Look at this. This thing is a gi it's gigantic. When you hold it, I got huge hands. And to hold this in your hands, and it's just, it's it's nicely made. You know, it works uh, very well. You can see here, made in China. But it is, it's it's nice. And it's, uh, look at the size of that, that uh, adjustment nut on the back. But I just thought this thing was the coolest thing ever. And uh, it's, you, you know, you really can't judge the size of it until you see it in person. But... I like uh, miniature g tools and I like giant tools. And here are regular size tools. And look at the size of that thing, huh? 
can you imagine uh i don't even have any you know what, what could you use it for but it's a really cool how to have it okay let's get to our we next got a thing. little something extra a little show and tell did you know channel lock made a vice grip type plier uh probably not because they're not too uh not too readily seen but i have one and we're going to check it out right now here it is it's the channel lock 910 you could see here it's a little bit dirty i'm going to clean it up we'll come back demonstrate it and show you how this beauty works Okay, here we are. We are finished calling this done. You can see this is the 910 grip lock model. Now, Channel Lock out of Meadville, Pennsylvania, has been in the business of uh, making all kinds of pliers for many years. And uh, what they did is they created this Frankenstein out of these three patents. And they said, uh, we're going to take a little bit of each, try and make a really good wrench that uh, will break into the vice grip market. But it really didn't fare too well. And let me show you how this works. Uh, basically, you would pick up the... Uh, the tool like this and uh, you would squeeze this back here to open and close the jaw then you would put it on to whatever you wanted to close it on like that and squeeze the handle down just like this you can see there's a tremendous amount of pressure exerted onto here now that's that's solid now to release it you would just pull down here on this little lever here would release it very easily and then you'd have to pull back on this but you could see the jaw pressure that it exerts uh, this is a straight jaw. They also made a 910C with a curved jaw. But uh, anytime you want to put on a bolt, you just had to pull this back like this, put it onto whatever you want, squeeze it down. You needed quite a bit of pressure because this is a uh, a very hard locking plier. And, uh, and then to release it, not too much pressure, but that would release it. And then to get it off whatever you wanted, you had to pull this back. It was a, uh, like I said, a Frankenstein of an affair. <laughs> and uh, although it's an interesting wrench, I don't know how usable it was, but they said you didn't have to adjust it. You know, it was self-adjusting. And there were so many of these uh, locking plies that tried to get away with that self-adjusting uh, mode. But uh, here we have the uh, Channel Lock Model 910. Thought you might find that interesting. Okay. Okay.